Welcome. This is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. How are you doing today? I'm so glad you stopped by. Has the thought ever occurred to you? Why is this happening to me? That very thought occurred to me today. I was in my bedroom and all of a sudden I heard this loud roar and I said what in the world is that and I ran into the kitchen area and I heard water gushing out I opened the doors from underneath my sink and looked and water was just pouring out I ran next door to my mom's and I said help me and we figured out where to turn the water off the main line outside and then we went back in the kitchen and figured out where to turn the water off underneath the sink for future reference because I sure didn't know how to do that but I think I will from now on if that ever happens again but then we tried to figure out where the leaks were coming from and we found this one hose that had just come loose and we found this other place where it was leaking as well and I tried to put that hose back to the connection and couldn't do it so I went and called my brother to fix it but when I was going through this and I remembered a dream that the Lord gave me many years ago when I had walked up to this sidewalk area and water had just flooded over that sidewalk and I stood there and looked and then God's breath blew on that water and the water parted like at the Red Sea moment when Moses and all the children of Israel were trapped and I just believed that the Lord was telling me that he would help me that he would make a way for any problems that came up in my life and if you are serving God if you are putting your trust in him then that's what he will do for you he will even part the waters for you if need be now I heard a wonderful sermon by this man yesterday and talk about needing the waters parted he has been going through a terrible time for several months one day he woke up and his right eye was just bothering him terribly he went to the ophthalmologist and they scraped the cells off of that eye and it began healing and then he said I thought that was bad he said but shortly thereafter his left eye started doing that and it was even worse and he's been going through it for several months and he can't even hardly see out of that eye and so the church was praying for him so I ask that you Pray for him. Say a prayer for him. I just know God is going to heal him. I just feel it. Oh, Lord, thank you for your answer to prayer. And I pray for each viewer that you will heal them, whatever they are needing in their lives, Lord. I pray that you will heal them because you are a God that loves us. You hear and answer our every cry. And he preached a real good sermon, this man that has been going through a bad time with his eye. He told about the man in the Bible whom Jesus healed. Remember the man that was blind and Jesus touched him and then he asked the man, 
how he could see and the man said I see men as trees walking well what do you think about that have you ever wondered why Jesus didn't just heal the man right away and gave him his complete healing right away the man said I see men as trees walking that means that he was partly healed he wasn't totally healed right away so then Jesus touched him again and then he was totally healed now we all know that Jesus could have healed the man right away Jesus is the one that created the universe he's the Word of God and he has great and mighty power he could have healed the man right away but I think Jesus was making a point by completing this man's healing in two stages many times people may not be healed immediately right away completely but what are you going to do with the in-between are you going to still show faith in God are you still going to trust in God that's what God wants us to do he wants us to trust him no matter what look at Job look at what all he had to go through I mean we've never had to go through anything like that right but Jesus will be there for you and I would like to share one of my storybook moments with you and I think this will speak to our situations and it's called life raft and it goes like this there is a raft floating in the ocean it had big letters written on it L-I-F-E it read the life raft had been floating for a very long time one day a storm came up and the raft was tossed around like a rag doll but somehow it never turned over the raft kept floating in a certain direction steadily persistently in the far distance there was a man floating in the ocean he had been pushed overboard when he was the only one on deck on this ocean liner someone had pushed him over he had no idea why anyone would push him overboard he had no enemies as far as he knew especially on the vacation cruise that he was on but he was tired of trying to figure it out he just wanted to live he had no idea if anyone from the ocean liner would even realize that he was missing he had been floating for a day and tired of floating would not even describe how he felt deep inside the word desperate came to mind he knew that he only had a little bit of time to be saved from certain death if hunger thirst or the heat of the Sun didn't get him maybe a sea creature would view him as a meal he wasn't a religious man but he had been sent to parochial school and had been taught some verses from the Bible his desperate thoughts turned to the only God the only one who could help him at this point he had always believed there was a God he wasn't totally sure but it just made sense to him that creation had to have a creator he had never given much thought about this need for the creator but now when he was at the point of death he began to wonder if there was life after death did our bodies just pass away and that was the end of it or was there something more oh he desperately wanted to live he cried out 
God, I'm not ready to go yet. He felt no hope, really, because he realized how small he was in that huge ocean. Even if there was an alert of a passenger overboard from the ocean liner, it would be hard for anyone to see him floating in the ocean. They might not ever find him. It might be too late. His strength was getting weaker, even though he was in great condition because he was a marathon runner. He had been trained to endure. He was going to endure as long as he could. But that didn't keep the fear of death away. He had heard of someone who had survived after floating in the ocean for three days. An amazing feat. But the other person had not been attacked by a shark. What if a shark showed up? His thirst was so strong, he was already feeling so dizzy. Somehow he made it through another night. By the next day, he thought that it wouldn't take too much longer to go out of his mind. In desperation, he cried out to God, God, if you're real, please save me. He knew the Lord's Prayer, so he prayed the Lord's Prayer. He felt a comforting presence, so he tried to remember as many Bible verses as he could. He quoted them out loud. He wondered if he had already lost his mind. Funny. A little forgotten verse came back to his memory from parochial school. He quoted it. Psalm 119 and 116. Sustain me and I will live. Do not let my hope be dashed. He felt that comforting presence again. It gave him hope. Then he saw something white off in the distance. He squinted his eyes to see better. Could it be? Could it be a raft? What adrenaline he had left kicked in and he began swimming toward it as fast as he could. He felt like he wasn't making much headway, but soon he was able to make out a word. L-I-F-E, life. Tears came to his eyes. He just might get out of this alive after all. After some time, he was able to get to the life raft and get on board. It had a boarding ramp to use in order to board more easily. He was so thankful for that since he felt so weak. He prayed, Oh God, I don't know how you sent the life raft, but I thank you that you did. When he got into the raft, he found food and water. Tears were streaming down his face as he drank and ate. He felt immediate strength go through his body. Oh, he would never take food and water for granted again. He looked around and noticed that the floor of the raft was insulated. He also found a beacon of light that he could use. I mean, this life raft had it all for survival. He found some flares and sent them skyward. He found the essential radio that was protected by the waterproof container. Whoever prepared this life raft meant business in saving a life. It wasn't very long after contacting the Coast Guard on the radio that he was rescued. He was surrounded by the media soon after his rescue. He knew people thought he was crazy after his experience because of what he said. It came out in the papers in bold black letters. Man says, God sent me a life raft. He just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that he knew that God had saved him. Little ones, God has sent us a life raft. 
a Savior, and His name is Jesus. God has provided everything that we will ever need to save our souls. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Accept this Savior today. Accept that life raft, Jesus. And remember, God is going to heal you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.